Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. If you notice, I'm wearing the same sweater as in the last video, repping the cancer sweater. That's because I'm recording these back to back. So in the last video, if you didn't watch it, we talked about the playoff prediction. We gave our entire bracket, like a March Madness bracket, where we go from the first round all the way to the finals. In this video though, we're talking about the awards for this season. MVP, MIP, Defensive Player of the Year. Now before I start with the video, I want you guys to let me know what your predictions are for these because that's kind of what makes this video fun. Like I want to hear what you guys think, if, if you guys are right or if I'm right, like let's just see what, what happens. So let's get into it. We gotta start off with the MVP. So we all know the MVP is out of two players, James Harden versus Giannis. James Harden, insane year. Averaged about 36 points per game. Yeah, 36 points per game. Like 26 is a pretty good year. 36 points a game, that's just insane. And a lot of people hate on the way he plays. They're like, oh, he's not playing real basketball, like step back threes. He just gets every foul. Man, if it works, it works. And it did obviously work, 36 a game. And then the Rockets were obviously one of the best teams in the West. They weren't as good as last year though. And their kind of shocking start to the year. To me, that, that makes a huge effect on personally. Like, yeah, he may have had really good stats, but to me, the way that you start the season, it kind of demonstrates how you play for the rest of the season. Like, if you're a team, you want to have a good start to the season. Because, number one, it's great for your team chemistry. If you're, Especially if you're like Brooklyn and you're, you start winning games at the start of the season. As a young team, it kind of lifts you up. For the Rockets, they were the opposite. They were having terrible games, losing. They were one of the bottom teams in the, in the West. And they were just looking bad. And then obviously they had the injuries and whatever, but they came back and obviously they're one of the better teams in the in the NBA at this point. But to me, it's Giannis, man. Giannis is the MVP and he is why. Obviously, yeah, he averaged 27 points per game and Harden's 36. It's, it's not just that. And yeah, obviously Giannis is going to average more rebounds because he's taller, but it's not really the stats. Giannis was the first seed in the East. He had a better record than James Harden. And to me, that counts for something. Another thing is... It's not just offensive stats that matter. Defensively, Giannis is a lot better than James Harden. And it's not even a question. And it's not even based on his length and, and you know, everything about what his physical attributes are. He just mentally is a better player on the defensive end than James Harden. He tries harder. He goes for every loose ball that there is. He, he actually plays defense. Obviously, Harden is not as bad as what people make him out to be, but he is not anything close to what Giannis is on defense. And to me, that plays a big part in who I would pick for the MVP. The Bucs, like I said, have a better record than the Houston Rockets. Eight more wins is a pretty big feat for a team that was not even really projected to be anything to what they are now. Another thing is that when you look at the supporting cast around them, Giannis is just built along shooters. And let's be honest, Chris Middleton, he's a good player. But he's not an all-star if he plays for any other team. Like, it's because of Giannis that Chris Middleton is an all-star. When you look at Houston, they got a better supporting class. Clint Capella, really good. Defensively, he's one of the best players in the NBA. Chris Paul, we all know how good Chris Paul is. Eric Gordon is a great shooter as a sixth man. He had, he had a bit of a down year, but he's still Eric Gordon, who being close to sixth man of the year, was a great player last season. And yeah, the Houston Rockets lost a few guys. They lost Trevor Reza, who was a big out, and Melo, which wasn't a big out, but I mean, he didn't do anything for the Rockets anyway. But then when you look at the Bucs, Brook Lopez, he's not projected to be this good when, when entering the season. He is this good because of Giannis. Because Giannis is that dominant that you have to double team him. He can kick it out to Brook Lopez. And yeah, obviously Brook Lopez is a great shooter. And I'm not I'm not denying that. But he's not that good without Giannis. I think Giannis makes his teammates better by a long shot. And yeah, his supporting cast is decent, but it's it's Giannis who makes it decent, in my opinion. I think he's the reason why Eric Bledsoe has had a really good year. Chris Middleton was an all-star. Brook Lopez has transitioned from being a center in the NBA to one of the best three-point centers in the NBA. Like, it's these things that I think Giannis brought to the box. And that's why they finished at the first seed. And he should be the MVP. Not to mention, the NBA obviously loves a great storyline. And Giannis is the great storyline this season. The pardon to win back-to-back, -back, yeah, it's a good storyline. But Giannis to lead a team that wasn't projected to be this good. For him to be this young, making a big impact on the league. For him to show the league that it's not just an American sport and it's international. I think the NBA, in terms of a storyline... 
I think Giannis has that as well. So yeah, that's my MVP. I tried to expand on that a little bit so you guys actually know why I chose Giannis over Harden, but either way, both players deserve to be MVPs, but that's my prediction. And let's get on to the Rookie of the Year. Now this, to me, was like, yeah, Doncic, easy, there's no question. And then we saw Trey Young just heat it up in that second half. It's not going to be like a Donovan Mitchell, Ben Simmons race. I think Doncic has this pretty easily. But Trey Young came in hot, which means look out next year. Trey Young, not just next year, in the future though. Trey Young, he's going to be a good player. He's going to be very good. And then Aiden, big men always take a little bit longer to develop. So watch out for Aiden, Trey Young, and Doncic. The future is right there, but to me, I think Dantish has this pretty easy as well. All right, Defensive Player of the Year. To me, it's out of two players. The first guy, I wouldn't be surprised if they do select him to win Defensive Player of the Year, and that's Paul George. The Thunder have been arguably one of the better surprises this season, only because, yeah, they were kind of this good last year, but I think Paul George really took it up a level this season. Like, there were times that people were saying he could have been MVP. He didn't produce that throughout the entire year, so he wasn't really an MVP candidate. But what he did in spurts really showed what he could produce, especially when it comes to the playoffs. If he could produce that all through the playoffs, the Thunder are going to be scary. But to me, Paul George defensively had a great season. Obviously, Kawhi's up there, but... I just think Paul George, because of the hype and what he was able to do coming back this season, I think he's up there. But to me, Rudy Gobert, once again, Defensive Player of the Year, I think the Utah Jazz, they had a good season. And Donovan Mitchell was up and down, but this guy, Rudy Gobert, was consistent throughout the whole year. Defensively, he was just dominant. So I think Gobert will win it, but I want Paul George to win it. And I think he'll finish second if he doesn't win it. All right, so sixth man of the year, to me, I think it goes to Lou Williams. I think the Clippers in general have been one of the biggest surprises, obviously, this season. So either Harold or Lou Williams will get it. I would love if Harold got it. I love Harold a lot more than Lou Williams. Harold's like been one of my favorite players ever since he entered the league. I loved him. Like he, when he was in Houston, I was like, why is this guy not getting any minutes? Every time I watched him, he was just dominant. Like he he couldn't be stopped. He was like aggressive, like kind of like a Kenneth Reed, but like. I don't even know, like, he just showed a lot of passion. And when he got traded to the Clippers, that was the best thing that ever happened to him. But, so Lou Williams or Harold will get it. Obviously, Dinwiddie has a very strong chance uh, because the Brooklyn Nets have been really, really good this season. And part of it has been due to him. But because he missed quite a bit of games with injury, it's hard to select him. Sabonis has been good as well. But to me, it's Lou Williams, I think, once again... The storyline's there for Lou Williams. I think that will be three, uh, six man of the year, and he's just made that role his, which is why I think he deserves to win it once again. But yeah, it's gonna be the it's gonna be one of the Clippers players, I think, in my opinion. And oh, I wish I hope it's Harold, but I think it will be Lou Williams. Okay, now most improved player. This one is gonna be close because there are a lot of candidates for this. There's Siakam, D'Angelo Russell, once again Harold. Uh, Dinwiddie, like there are so many guys that could win it this season. I think it's going to be Siakam. I didn't think he was going to be this good. And even after they traded for Gasol and they still got Ibaka, I think he's still playing at a very high level and he's the reason why the Raptors are really, really good this season. Obviously DeRozan left and Kawhi replaced him, but not even just that. I think the Raptors are really, really good because of Siakam. And I think he's the reason why they are this good. So I'm saying he's going to win the most improved player. I think he proved to the league why he deserves it in terms of his stats. He's balling out. He's offensively improved a lot. And defensively, he's always been good, but he's even better this season. So to me, he is the most improved player of the league. But it is hard because you also watch players like D'Angelo Russell and you say like, wow, this guy's balling out. But ah, it's, it's going to be, it's close. It's definitely close. But I think it's out of, it's like it's out of the guys that I mentioned, but I think Siakam is just one step ahead of all those guys. Pretty much also because the Raptors are as good as they are, which which does actually help quite a bit. In addition, Siakam was always very athletic, but that's just part of his game now. Like you don't look at him and say, "Oh, he's an athletic player." You look at him and say, "He's a great defensive player, great offensive player, good offensive player, and he can stretch the floor now, which is huge." Like he wasn't a good shooter in his rookie year, or at least not now, uh, not what he is now. So that kind of helps a lot as well. And lastly, we're just going to do the coach of the year, and I think to me that's pretty easy. Mike Woodenhoser from the Milwaukee Bucks. I think after leaving Atlanta and 
Obviously, the Atlanta Hawks had a very, very good year when he was coaching them. Four All-Stars that season. When he had to leave that and he joined the Bucks, he just he's just a great coach. There's nothing else to say. Under Pop, he would have learned a lot, and he's definitely shown that being the best coach in the NBA. I don't think it's a question at this point. Bucks have killed many, many teams this year, and it's not just Giannis, it's part of the coach's job as well. So he wins coach of the year. I don't think there's any question about that. So let me know what you guys think down below. If you're new around here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe, turn on notifications, follow me on Instagram, and I will catch you guys in my next video. I'm out.